Hola a todos, soy Javier Poveda y esto es de Bien TV, el canal donde te lo vas a pasar. A ver si me acuerdo. Sí, de bien, mientras aprendes geografía, historia, historia del arte y este año un poquito de economía y de empresariales. Este vídeo va dirigido a mis alumnos de cuarto de la ESO, de sección del CEIP Solencinar de Torrelodones. <coughs> In this video we are going to start the study of the unit 5 following our wonderful presentations like this yeah in which are or which is the second industrial revolution and the imperialism as usual we have divided this into parts the first one is the second industrial revolution so let's go with this what is this between the years 1870 and 1914 the second industrial revolution took place remember that we already know about the first industrial revolution at the end of the 18th century and the first half of the 19th century this second industrial revolution was characterized by a rapid industrialization due <clears throat> due mainly to the increase in the importance of the financial sector in industry and the rise of finance capitalism. So let's see how it went. First, we have to talk about the innovations and changes that happened during this period. The new sources of finance. So in order to be able to set up, renovate or maintain a factory, the business owners had to find new sources of finance. We have three main features um, regarding this topic. First, a joint stock company, una sociedad anónima que llamaríamos hoy en día. It was a company made up of individuals who each contributed, uh, contribute, contributed, Dios mío, a part of the capital. So each investor bought shares in the business and received a proportional part of the profits or losses. This is a share which value is $500 of the American Express company, the company that today um, makes the credit cards. Okay. Um, a share is what we call una acción. It's a part of the company. So if you own a part of the company, you share the property of the company, you receive the same part of the profits or the losses, los dividendos. Then we have the banks. The banks, which already existed, they exist since what, what we could more or less what we today we recognize as a bank, they exist since the Middle Ages, but in this period they developed a lot. A bank lends money to businesses in return for interest, in return for a profit. So the banks started to buy shares in businesses and became investors. They started to invest in new companies. And this led to a union between financial and industrial capital, between the banks and between the factories. And finally, uh, because of uh, this appearance of the joint stock companies and the banks and the shares, we have the stock exchanges, which were marketplaces where shares in companies were bought and sold. Una bolsa de valores. So here you have a picture of a bank, of a bank in the 19th century, which people from a line here to, um, to pay or to ask for a loan or whatever. This is and the stock exchange in France and the stock exchange in London. And I was hoping for a picture of Wall Street, but I forgot that. So we also have new business structures. So the, these businesses, these new businesses joined to become associations in order to reduce competition by limiting the production, establishing fixed prices and dividing the market between them. La Tramatore. How did they do that? Following, well, uh, they, and they made several uh, business structures. We have three of them. The cartels, un cartel, they are horizontal associations of different companies working in the same industry, which made collective decisions about production and prices. A horizontal association means that they participate in the same level of the transformation uh, process. Okay, 
For example, they are both uh, extractors of raw materials or they both uh, transform these raw materials in manufactured products or they both uh, distribute the products. What is the main cartel nowadays, for example? what we call in Spanish the OPEP, la Organización de Países Exportadores de Petróleo, because they fix the prices, they limit the production in order to maintain some level of prices, so they have a profit warranted. Then we have the trusts. The trusts is a uh, similar association, but this time it is vertical because this, they are formed by various companies working in different industries, but in the same in the same um, transformation process. Okay, which use their size to control the market for their products and eliminate their competitors. So, for example, if a company that extracts the oil and then the, another company that refines it and another company that distributes it, they join together so they control all the process of transformation and they are bigger and they can eliminate their competitors. And finally, a holding company. A holding company is nothing else than a large financial company that earn profit by buying and holding shares in other companies. That is why they are called a holding, because it's a company which only investment is shares. Okay, It's a company that owns another, another group of companies like this. Okay, And they can invest in several sectors. Okay. The most important trust was the um, the Standard Oil Trust in the United States, which was owned by the Rockefeller uh, family. Okay, and these are well, and this uh, trust, well, they, they, it was so powerful that the government had to intervene, and they actually they passed the Antitrust Act in the beginning of the 20th century. And finally, we have new technological advances. They, um, well, they were, there were several advances. One of the most important is the improvement of the Bessemer converter. Remember that we studied that in the first industrial revolution to produce steel. And this helped to lower the cost of the, pro of the steel, which was an important material for railways, for cars, and for the construction of skyscrapers, los rascacielos. And other important innovation and inventions of this era include the dynamite, the stainless steel, el acero inoxidable, and the artificial fibers. Okay, this is um, a new converter, as you can see here, which is it is used today, modernized, but used today. This is the dynamite, which was invented by Alfred Nobel, the guy of the prices, and the invention of the stainless steel and the artificial fibers. This is rayon, which is also called artificial silk, la seda artificial. And this helps to lower the price of the, uh, of the clothes. And also another invention were the aspirins, the, um, the x-rays, las radiografías, this is the first ever x-ray, the telegraph, the telephone, the radio, the electric refrigerator, the sewing machine, and the phonograph, which is the um, antecessor of the gramophone, the cinematograph, the, um, the filming machine, and uh, well, this is the first ever uh, video which uh, was recorded. It's a very a short video. You can you can watch it. No, 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 no. Vamos a ver. Ahora, the first modern bicycle, there were another bicycles, but this is the first modern bicycle, also called the security bicycle, if I am not mislead. The first automobile, the first car, which was developed by Carl Benz in 1885. Look, it's very, well, it's curious. And the first airplane, okay, by the Wright brothers. Finally, new sources of energy. In addition to coal and gas, which were the most important in the first industrial revolution, here we have also electricity and oil. Okay, electricity was developed first with hydropower. They produce electricity and taking advantage of the water courses. 
and was one of the most significant developments was the invention of the incandescent light bulb, la bombilla incandescente by Thomas Edison in the year 1879, um, which replaced the gas lights. So the, the light produced by the gas. Here you have the first light bulb. And also the oil, which new fuels such as kerosene and petrol. And they were produced uh, by refining this, uh, this oil, the petroleum. And the, one of the most important industries was the petroleum industry, which um, was uh, necessary to the development of these new transports, such as the airplanes or the cars. A ver, la rueda del ratón. And finally, new industries. We have the electricity industry, as, as obvious. And also other important industries were the, were the food industry, with the preserved food, the chemical industry, mostly for perfumes, cosmetics and medicine, the automobile industry with Henry Ford and the Model T, and finally the consumer good industries, consumer goods industries, la industria de los bienes de consumo, which are the goods we, that are directly consumed by the public, by the people. Okay? This is well, some examples. This is the first hydroelectric plant, very small. This is um, a canned food factory, the comida envasada, a chemical lab in the MIT, the Massachusetts uh, Institute of Technology. This is the Model T of Ford, which was the, um, the first car which was sold in a massive way. Whoops. And uh, now we have to talk about the consequences of all of these processes, of all of these innovation and changes. First, the organization of the work. It changed because the assembly line developed, la cadena de montaje. In this assembly line, each worker was specialized in a specific task, such as placing a nut, a nut es una tuerca, or unscrewing a nut, o atornillarla. ¿Vale? This saved time and meant more products could be manufactured. This was invented by Henry Ford in his company, the Ford Motor Company, the, the company that exists today. And, and this was used to his car manufacturing. That's why they could, uh, they developed the, for the Model T. And since they could produce a lot more cars, they could, he could lower the price of these products, so it was sold massively, because it was cheaper than the other uh, automobile uh, models. And this meant also that uh, the wages of his workers were increased, were raised, uh, but the, this type of work was very boring, okay, because 12 hours or um, screwing and that, mm, mm, mm. then next car, mm, next car, mm, next car, mm. boring as, I was going to say very bad for the worker, but they were paid more. And finally, the birth of the consumer society. This, uh, la sociedad de consumo. It was developed due to an increase in production, which led to a new way of thinking, and people began to value material well-being highly. Okay, because since uh, there were a lot of more products in the market, and people uh, could afford them, this um, changed their mentality, so they started to value these uh, consumer goods. And because of this, this is the birth of advertising, de la publicidad. To tell people, this was used to tell people about their products in order to sell everything they, everything they, perdón, everything they produced. To avoid an accumulation of unsold products, uh, products okay, which uh, usually it leads to a crisis. And this was particularly important in the consumer goods industry because the final customer is the uh, regular population. For example, for the food, for the textiles, for the footwear, the electricity, chemical, and the car industries. And here you have some examples of these adverts. Um, the Nivea cream, la cremita está de Nivea que nos damos para hidratarnos. 
um, well, and I will show you more. This is the assembly line in Ford, okay? Here you have a lot of workers and each worker has a specific task. For example, they take a nut here and they put it here and then the next and then the next and then the next and each one of these guys, they had a specific task for them, okay? For example, here, the cars goes by they go by and this, these workers, their only task is to place the seats on the chassis. Okay, and then the next car and then the next car. Here again, this is where they, uh, they place the wheels of the car. And here they are screwing it to attach it to the car. And this is a uh, video of how this uh, assembly line works. If you want, you can watch it on YouTube. Opa. Eh. Atrás. More advertisements. Coca-Cola, the Titanic, spoiler, it went bad, uh, soap, uh, the Michelin, the tires, the Gillette, the saving razors, and the cocaine candy. Sí, caramelitos de cocaína para los niños. No los probéis. Then we have the economic crisis and cycles. This economic crisis arose from the excess of products. That is, was, that is why the advertising was so important. Because uh, when they produced, the production increased so much that sometimes the market could not consume all of these products, which resulted in an imbalance between the supply and the demand. When there is a lot of supply and um, if you were a, a smaller demand, then the, the prices, boom, they go down and there is a crisis. So, and then we have a recovery and this is the capitalism cycle, okay? There are, there are cycles of economy growth that, fo that are followed by crisis and this is a characteristic feature of capitalism here. You can see it, um, economic growth and expansion, it reaches a peak and then we have a crisis with a recession until we uh, reach here a trough, el pozo, <laughs> and then another recovery, expansion and so on. Okay, and uh, also we have to talk about the growth of international trade. As it is obvious, the international trade increased due to the growth in industrial production the improvement of the transport systems, for example, the railways and the shipping, and the construction of tunnels and canals with, with the use of the dynamite. What are the most important engineering uh, works in this period? For example, the canals of Suez in Egypt in the year 1869 and the Panama Canal in, uh, in Panama in the year 1914. The first one uh, built by the French and later the English and the Panama Canal made or built by the American capital. Here you have, this is the Suez Canal, which joins, the, which communicates the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. And this is the Panama Canal, which links the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean. And uh, well, this second industrial revolution um, led to uh, new countries um, becoming great industrial producers. Bill, um, aside the United Kingdom, we have the United States and Germany, followed by France, Japan, and later, later, Russia. In Spain, as usual, we were slower than the rest of Europe, so our industrialization um well we we were poorer than all our our neighbors oops oops here you have a couple of examples in the second half of the 20th century where the industrial areas were located some in andalusia some in catalonia mainly the textiles and in the um, in the Cantabrian next in the areas next to the Cantabrian Sea in the northern part of Spain with the coal industries and the steel industries. Los Altos Hornos. El primero estuvo en Marbella, que lo sepáis. And the end. This is another invention, the what, uh, another consequence of the invention of electricity, which is the electrical chair. This is the first guy exec <coughs> executed in the electrical chair in the United States of America. And of course, He's black. Esto lo digo porque para que veáis lo que son así los, los yankees. 
and this is the end. So, bueno, así que vamos a volver ya al castellano, que para eso es nuestro idioma. Esto es todo por esta primera parte. Espero que os haya ayudado un poquito. He intentado ir un poco rápido porque en el anterior vídeo que hice para otro curso me tiré media hora y no quería que pasara lo mismo en este. Así que espero que os haya ayudado. Cualquier duda me la consultáis. Seguidme en redes sociales, dale like a todo lo que veáis y nos vemos en el próximo. Muchas gracias por estar ahí.